So this will be my interview with TGV. He kind of stated that nobody's really had his side of the story. Uh, when it comes to all of the Crows of Redemption uh, situation, and I wanted to speak with him about it, given the opportunity, and, we you know, it is a little, aside from a little technical difficulties, uh, we're finally doing this interview. So I was going to start out with, like, just some basic questions and stuff, kind of like, okay, so what interested you on YouTube? What kind of content do you like? What kind of started you down the YouTube rabbit hole, so to speak? Um, so about this mid November, it will be the 10th year of me uploading videos, um, on YouTube. I had a channel before my current channel. Um, and I started, uh, November, uh, late mid November of 2014. And what started was I, when I was younger, I had a group of friends who introduced me to like the Van Os crew and they were doing like dumb, dumb gaming videos. And mini lad was doing like ask minis and, um, they would, they would just do all different types of content. And I had a group of friends who were huge fans of them and they kind of showed me who they were and blah, 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 blah. So I remember when I was younger, I started the channel, my old channel with a friend of mine and, the very first video I did was just making fun of my friends and family on Facebook, which was a horrible video. Like <laughs> it, I, it pissed off some of my family. It pissed off some of my friends. And at that point I learned, okay, I don't want anything to do with my private life and, and ruining my relationship with them just yeah. for the sake of views, which by the ways it didn't get any views at all. So it was kind of pointless to do that, but I was 14 years old. It was me being stupid and dumb as a kid. Um, and then I started getting into doing like, vlogs i tried gaming at one point but i never found gaming to be something that i wanted i didn't i don't want to sit down on a computer screen and just play games all day you know so i kind of wanted to just do something else um and then as i was just getting older throughout school i started taking like political political classes and debate classes and stuff like that so i wanted to get into commentary at one point um but when i created the new channel i tried doing more vlogs um movies was a big thing i wanted to be a movie uh maker like a director or producer of some sort so started making movies on my channel and i still have some of them up to this day um and then what kind of just really drove to what my channel is now is in fall of 2020 um i was a huge fan of mini lad uh it turned out he was a pedo there was a bunch of allegations floating out about him. Yeah. I made a reaction video to some of these allegations and I got like my first ever live stream to get past like 2000 views or something like that. And I thought, Whoa, there's a lot of people who like me talking about mini lad. Let me just continue to do this. So I was a channel only talking about mini lad for like, six months straight like every little thing but but there was a lot of content too like he was responding slowly in videos he was replying to people on discord and that was leaking he was putting out statements on instagram and twitter so there was a lot of content to cover but for the next six months i made nothing but mini lad content on saying how horrible of a person he is for all these allegations out about him which he admitted to and um what he did to the victims um that kind of blew up my channel to be I'm like, OK, there's a small content creator who only makes drama videos about this. Yeah. Um, and then the following May is when Keemstar did his drama alert video with Omrecker. And that sort of propelled me even farther because people knew me as, OK, I make videos about Minilad. I make some videos about the other Vanos crew, but they were just like fun little edits and stuff like that. Um, but soon as that came out, I started live streaming every day about that. And my first live stream about it got over like 50,000 views. And oh, then wow. I started, I interviewed Omrecker. Omrecker wanted to join my live stream to like, cause he didn't like what I was saying about him. So he joined that got like 500,000 plus views and more, more and more of my videos were just starting to explode in the community that likes the Van Os crew. Um, or just some of the commentary drama community liked it too. And that's what made people think, oh, he's the commentary drama Vanos crew guy. And that's sort of what most of my subscribers are. That's where a lot of my views originated from and how I kind of blew up as a commentary channel. That's what got me enough money to go buy myself <laughs> my car um, for the first time. And uh, yeah, so I guess what kind of got me into it in the first place is that I just thought it was pretty cool. I'll try it out as a hobby. I always had a hobby ever since I was 14. But when I was about 20 years old in 2020, um that's when it sort of took off um the six years in between was just whenever i had time i'll upload videos which i had like a lot of time you know high school was easy i was always a pretty intelligent kid 
I went to college. College was pretty easy for me. So I always had this free time to either make movies, vlogs, edits, doing a whole bunch of different stuff. And then when commentary took off, um, I was working at uh, Fairway in the meat department and I hated it so much. And I was just like, as soon as my first mini lad video took off, um, I literally put in my two week at that point and said, okay, I'm just going to do commentary only. And ever since I've only had this as a job, um, for the last four years, I've been just doing commentary. Um, people think that you don't earn a lot of money. If you only get a, like a few thousand views per video, you earn actually a lot more money than you think. And I have a lot of memberships on my channel too. So it's actually been keeping me afloat and I've been able nice. to have it as a job. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Um, I know you touched on the whole mini lad situation a little bit. Um, so in like my review and like trying to like learn stuff about you and everything else, I came across, uh, there was a, a video with the crows and all that, that I'll eventually get into. But, uh, I heard it mentioned that like you had a relationship that was, uh, within somebody involved with the mini lad situation. Would you be willing to talk about yeah. that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, everything that has to do with like whatever crow mentioned in a video or other people mentioned in the video i'm not ever gonna shy away from I'll, I'll be completely honest and blunt about all of it but what happened was i covered the mini light situation in late 2020 but soon as may of 2021 came around there wasn't new information to cover about mini lights so i just was talking about own wrecker and delirious and the vanos crew and keemstar and all that drama well, at that point, um, Hallie, which I knew, um, I actually sent her, you know, Christmas gifts and bought stuff off her wish list because I felt so bad about what happened with the mini lad situation. And she was getting hate every day online. I wanted to like buy her things, like give some of my money that I was making off of her situation and buy her things for Christmas. So she sent me an Amazon wish list and I was just like buying stuff and it would just get shipped to her address or whatever. So I was already like kind of on good terms with her and uh, and friends with her at okay. that point. Um, but I, I, I just didn't talk to her on a regular basis, though. And I never thought about dating her at the time either. Um, all I was doing was trying to like make sure she's all right and that she's OK with me uploading these types of videos on a situation that she was involved in. Um, and then when the Ohm Wrecker and Delirious situation came around in like May of 2021, Sometime after that, I don't know if it was a few months after or what, um, it might have been late 2021, but she came over to my channel or, or came over to my Discord, uh, joined a VC and was just chit chatting with everyone and everyone was going crazy. Oh, my God, it's Hallie, you know, um, and it, I don't know what's when when it specifically happened, but somebody was like joking about us being in a relationship, which was not the case at all. And she actually reached out to me at that point and asked if I would be interested. And then it just led to us having private calls and just talking about it individually. And then that led to us having a relationship. Now, the relationship was only a month long because after a okay. month, I was I, I was still willing to upload mini lad content, even though I was dating one of the females who were you know involved in the situation with mini lad yeah and she, uh hallie didn't particularly like that but i understand why she didn't because she wouldn't want her boyfriend talking about her past you know situation so she wanted to like split ways at that point and i agreed i said yeah let's just split ways this ain't gonna work out anyways um you know she doesn't live too far away from me i don't think but it wasn't gonna be something where me and her were gonna try to make an effort to see each other in person. It was just like an online one month fling, I think. Okay. And um, that, that that's all it was, nothing serious. And then soon as other people started figuring out about that, um, it turned into um, uh, like a issue or a topic for other people to cover. So other people would try to use that being like, oh, you benefited and profited and got big off the mini line situation. And then you dated immediately one of the victims. And it, it, it wasn't like that. It was people like was paying it that, that like that was my goal. I was always trying to do that. Um, Hallie approached me about a relationship first. And we only dated for a month. It was all online. And uh, we tried calling each other every night and trying to make it like sweet and romantic or whatever. Didn't work out that way. And then it just, you know, we immediately just cut it off after a month. And it, it was causing problems. That was another reason why we cut it off is that too many people were causing her problems or me problems. And she didn't want that. So we just cut it off. And then we've been friends ever since. And then I would say a couple months ago, me and her had a public feud that now we don't talk anymore she wants nothing to do with me and it was because i still make mini lad videos to this day about new things that come out and she hated that 
and told me to remove my video. And I said, no, I'm not going to remove my video politely. And um, she hated that. So then she went on Twitter and blasted me all about it. So it kind of ends in sad note because I don't talk to her anymore, even though I do wish her well. Um, but Crow and other people kind of blew it out of proportion like it was some disgusting and awful thing when really she approached me. It was mainly on her what it when it initiated. And then during the relationship, it was kind of like the early stages of a high school relationship. Like nothing ever happened. We yeah, talked, we yeah. complimented each other. We were respectful. And then that's all that really happened. And it was only a month long. Okay. Okay. And then yeah, it sounds like you like even when there became like maybe a conflict of interest, so to speak, like that's kind of when everything ended. And so it didn't really seem like it yeah. conflicted with anything. Well, it seems like you, you were right. On this it, path. It, it was it was right. It was the first video I made was the same day or it was the very next day me and her split up was when I made my first video about mini lad after dating her because like throughout the first month. I didn't talk about mini lad. I was too busy talking about like ohm and delirious and other issues uh, with the van Ross crew. And um, I uploaded a video about mini lad, which wasn't even about her. It was about mini lads content. And it was about something he was saying. So it wasn't even about her or their messages or what happened between them. It was about a completely different thing to do with mini lad. And then she, the very next day initiated the conversation for us to then split. Okay. And so, yeah, there there wasn't no conflict of interest, and I was never interested in her from the get-go. So some people were questioning my videos from years ago, and I was like, dude, I didn't even like I didn't even have communication with her when I first started making some of these videos. <laughs> like, how would there be a conflict of interest? And some people were saying that I was just biased and I wasn't given the f a fair chance to Miniland, which is insane to say, uh, given that he's a pedo and he tried yeah. hiding it up. And that it, he, you know, he said that soon as sponsor starts working with him, everyone will forget about it. He treated his audience like they were kind of dumb. Um, and then, yeah, it, it was just all that sort of stuff. It, it, it's really insane that people use that against me. But I it was something that I had to learn to expect that any little thing about your life will get out there. So following that any relationship I had, I never shared it. And some people to this day think I'm not in a relationship when I have been, I've been in a relationship for like, like the last three and a half years and nobody knows about it really. And it's not like I'm trying to hide it. It's just that I would prefer not to mention it because it's just bait for other people to use. And I try to do that as like minimal as possible. Yeah. And it's kind of one of those things you're, you're separating your business life from your personal life. I mean, it, exactly. you know, you got to have some divide there. You got to have something when you shut off, when you log off that, that is yours. I feel like. Right. Right. And, and, and it's weird because I, you know, you kind of know, from what I told you, like my past on YouTube, I have vlogs with my family, my cousins, my friends, you know, I have, I have, you know, film, I, I've made movies with my, my, my family and my friends in it. So if someone really wanted to go back and learn a lot about my life, they could, it's just, no one's willing to do that. But the moment they hear, Oh, you're dating one of the mini lad victims. They try to turn it into something worse than what it was when it was like a one month fling. It was nothing serious. And it didn't, have any sort of conflict with any of my videos but it surely did not stop people like crow and the people he associates with as, as well as um uh what's his name velocity hd which he's okay. a good friend of louis um i don't know if you know of him but he made a few videos about me as well and those kind of got a little popular but they never got more they they didn't they really didn't get higher than like 20,000 views. I really didn't care about them. Um, but they eventually got taken down too because of what I did. Me and Louie had a conversation which got the videos taken down. Um, and I never came out publicly to talk about it because I was just glad that they were down because a lot of them had lies and misdirect in there about me. Um, but we, we can probably get to that later if you want to. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, we're kind of segueing into kind of what I was going to ask about next, which is like, You've had different, or how would you describe your different interactions with the Vanos crew members, and what interactions had you had with them? Um, so I've had interactions, I would say, with just about everybody besides the people who really did not, don't want to get into the drama. Those who don't want to get into the drama, I have not had an interaction with. So like Moo, I've never talked to Moo. Uh, basically, I do work, never talked to him. Um, I... I the people I've like spoken to would be uh Wildcat, Ohm Wrecker, um uh Louie. Louie, Ohm, Wildcat, um a few of the Vanos Cruz significant others have reached out to me on Twitter before. Delirious, um Liz Cats, 
um i believe liz katz um but i i've reached out or, or either they or i've reached out to them and we've had conversations i've had vcs with some of them as well and then other interactions like i've i've interacted and replied to a big jiggly panda and one of his videos in the comment section he replied back terrorizer and nogla they've had conversations in my live chats uh, or whatever um so some interactions have been low some some interactions have been a little higher. Um, it all depends on the person and how much they wanted to interact with me. But I've spoken with them a great deal. And most of the interactions are fine. Like once we're talking, everything's fine. It's just sometimes when like, you know, I had I have I had conflict with Liz and Delirious. When they talk in my live chat, it's like they're kind of talking a big game. So we don't get along. But then when it goes private or when the conversation stops, everyone's fine. Um, and then like that's sort of the thing that happens um with yeah. that so yeah and i know so since you've been like i feel like you've had a very very uh, in-depth hand in this and probably have better knowledge than most um at least for my audience do you kind of want to like summarize the situation between h2o delirious and ohm wrecker and kind of what happened there and i know that's something yeah. you've covered extensively right and 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 the fact that i've covered it in so many videos it's kind of hard to summarize it um but if i really wanted to dump dumb it down it would come from um Ohmrecker was super against what mini lad did he like publicly made comments about it and, and thought it was awful Ohmrecker even went to the extent of making a comment about terrorizer and saying that terrorizer never spoke up when mini lad was going through all this bullshit or whatever and that got terrorizer pretty upset with Ohmrecker. well it led all the way up to ohm wrecker having issues with delirious and the rest of the crew who knew about uh delirious having a skype call with a minor way 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 back in like 2014 2015 something like that it was a long long time ago right right like right when they were getting big or whatever delirious had a skype call with a minor and it was set up by wildcat and or, or not maybe not wildcat but basically i do work in a few other people and pretty much uh that led to ohm wrecker going on drama alert to expose the Vanos crew and Delirious and all this other stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, according to Omerker, um, and he said this publicly, the the drama alert was supposed to just be about really Delirious um, and what happened with that situation, but it kind of bled over to other members that were mentioned in the drama alert and how they knew about Delirious having a Skype call with a minor and all this other sort of stuff. And um, that led to just the giant feud of the Vanos crew versus Ohm Wrecker and uh, Ohm and Delirious you know, um, ended up having a lawsuit against each other. I think Ohm started the lawsuit against Delirious and Delirious countersued, but then Delirious eventually ended up dropping out years later. Um, and they just had a lawsuit for the last few years, which has eventually dropped and been settled. And now we don't know any information about how it got settled who paid who if there was a huge dollar amount or not i just said from what i have known over the years and from what i can guess from what i've learned about these sort of defamation lawsuits and stuff like that it's more than likely since delirious dropped his countersuit that more than likely delirious paid ohm wrecker some big dollar amount for ohm wrecker to drop the case and settle and so what I assume is Delirious paid out Ohm. And that was my assessment. I had, I had a video about it. I even guessed the dollar amount for the sake of it, you know. Um, and so Ohm, so Delirious probably paid Ohm Wrecker some big number for the defamation lawsuit. And with that, they have they can't really talk about it no more. Yeah. So there dies any sort of new drama coming out because they can't talk about it. You know, they'll be breaking the NDA or whatever they signed about it. And um Ever since, you know, uh, some members had issues with Allmarker, like Wildcat had some issues with Allmarker. And then with that, m with the Allmarker Delirious drama, that's what kind of caused Van Oss to come over to my live chat sometime. Terrorizer, Noglo, Louie, and a few of them that, you know, everyone started popping up more in my live chats more. And that's kind of how the situation sometimes would explode more because okay. it'd be a headline. Oh my God, Van Oss comes over to the small stream with yeah. drama and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I can get that. I can get that. I know one situation, and, and you mentioned the person that I kind of wanted to talk about. Maybe you can give me a little more information on is uh, Louis. I know, I know that you've had a couple interactions with him. Like he said, some good, some bad. And I was just wondering if you could tell me about that. Like what what started, what happened there, anything. Right. So uh, Louis started coming over to my channel more and more when um, I was talking about the Omar and Delirious situation, and he kind of became more of a regular in there. I think Louis and Ohm 
shared the most amount of time chatting in my live chat out of anyone. And Louis wasn't even involved with most of it. He made some comments about it, but he wasn't really even involved with it. Uh, Louis had his own allegations um, and Crow made some you know, popular streams like Louis evil X's and stuff like that, talking about the Louis situation and how, um, I, I don't want to summarize it on their behalf, but I think pretty much what they were getting at was Louis X's made up a bunch of fake shit to try to take down Louis because Louis rejected them or something like that. That was like the gist of like what I knew at the time. And then people were recommending me, even some people privately that I can't mention that are a little bit more popular than your average Joe. They were reaching out to me saying, Hey, you should probably check this out sometime if you have the time, um, and, and form your own opinion from it. So I end up eventually after the omen delirious drama died down a little bit i had time to go look at the google doc which apparently exposes louis and i went in there nothing super exposing from what i saw but i i only made videos on like part one of the document not the entire document so when i made a video about part one of the document um by the end of it it does show that louis sent pictures you know mostly nude you know you don't see any of his private parts but you can tell he's like in the bathroom or something like that. And he did send it to this girl who claimed she was underage. She showed IDs, like three different IDs with the same birth date, but most of the IDs blurred to protect the identity of the individual. Yep. So at the end of the video, I made an assessment. I made it my own opinion um, that if these IDs are real, I do believe Louie would be classified as a PDF file, you know? Yeah. And so I, I said that in my video and I said, but if the IDs are fake, these girls who made the document are giant pieces of crap and shouldn't be doing stuff like this. Well, when I said that, it, that's what kind of had Crow from getting along with me and all of Crow's buddies. They were all getting along with me. That's kind of what made them turn to like, oh, yeah, we ain't going to get along with you anymore. And they started making a video, you know, sometimes just shit talking, sometimes just making fun of me. But they would like sit here and say that, oh, you're wrong on this. You're wrong on that, blah, 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 blah. And I would try to specifically state over and over again, hey, it's just my opinion. I think those IDs are real. I don't know why they put fake IDs there. But again, I'm not going around making six videos claiming Louis a pedo like I did with Mini Lad because Mini Lad admitted to it. Yeah. On this hand, it's they showed evidence. I gave my opinion. They didn't like my opinion, so I was constantly dogged on by them over and over again. Um, so much to the point that I've been told several times by people who I guess were close with Louis at the time. I don't know if these stories are true or not, but apparently Louis was going out telling people to go after me and that don't let up on TJV. And this led to this one video where Louis was in, in in the live stream or in the VC with us while Crow or Sen was live streaming. And then he pops out of nowhere and threatens to sue me. Um, I go pretty quiet at this point because I'm like, oh, well, I guess they just pulled a little sting operation and have him pop up out of nowhere to do this live and try to embarrass me or whatever. And that led to a private call with Louie and Toy Bounty Hunters where they... After after the stream, they were like, hey, if we remove your videos about Louie, he won't sue you. And then um, that's pretty much what they said. And I said, OK, so I privatized them. And then they realized I privatized them. They were like, no, 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 delete them. And I was like, I'd much rather keep them private so I can go back and clear the record later just in case this does turn into a law lawsuit. And he sat here and was like, no, no, delete them, delete them. So I ended up deleting them at the time, peer pressured because I was being threatened with a lawsuit at the time. Yeah. And at the time, I was also pretty broke. I was living in a house where my best friend at the time was not paying rent. So I was covering the entire rent just so we could stay in the house. And um, I, it was a horrible decision I made to live with a best friend at the time. It was a good, you know, we thought it was a good idea at the time, but it was awful. But I was under so like financial peer pressure in my personal life that I couldn't risk entering a lawsuit and paying lawyers and getting into that sort of thing. So I did it because I, my personal life was all fucked. If my personal life wasn't fucked, I probably wouldn't have deleted the videos. I probably would have said, eh, just file the lawsuit. I'll pay, for, pay for lawyers or whatever. Um, and so and anyways, what happened down the road is Louis still ended up joining my live chats. When I talked about other drama, he still joined. He still got along with me. He still joked. He even joined my live stream to talk in the VC about whatever topic I was talking about. And then Louis had issues with like Mr. Sen and or Chilled Venom or other people. And Louis would like damn me and we would get along and everything would be fine. Um, and then Louis's friend Velocity uploaded some video with my ex Discord staff team who had a vendetta to like go after me. 
Velocity uploaded this video or whatever. Uh, I have the screenshots of the video, even though they're not public and I have all the videos downloaded. Um, but I was planning on making a huge response video to it. And um, it was like a year later because at first I said, I'm not going to make a re really a response video. I said I was going to and then I changed my mind and said, I'm not going to anymore. Um, but then about a year later, I was going to make a big response video, like disproving all this stuff and having actual people who actually know me have real accounts of the certain of the, uh, certain situations of these. And I threatened um, Louie and Velocity if the videos don't get taken down, I'm just going to post this. And some people were saying Louie's involved a lot heavy in those videos than what's expected because it looks like it's just velocity doing it but okay. from multiple people's accounts louis was involved in it and he wanted like a bad reputation for me because i apparently called him a pdf file just because it was my opinion um and based on actual information i wasn't just calling him a pdf file for no reason yeah, i was because, calling him it because yeah. you know <laughs> I, I was actually calling him it because i believe some of those ids were real um even though they claim they're not real but i've never been shown the uncensored version of those some people say oh i've seen them they're fake oh i've seen them they're real i've heard both sides um but so you can't trust you know anything. that, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> right 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 so i just said huh, maybe the ids are real because i doubt they have three fake ids right here i mean it ain't, it ain't impossible but i just think they're real but anyways i threatened velocity and louis if they don't take down the videos i will just make all this and i'll include other people's accounts of louis being involved and being you know um sneaking you know uh acting like a little mini villain here and being hyper against me or whatever well louis didn't want that he called velocity and then when Louis called me back, he sat here and was like, okay, go check out the videos. Because Velocity refused to talk to me through VC. I don't know why, but he refused to talk <laughs> to me. He hates my guts. Um, but uh, Louis called me back and he was like, okay, go look at the videos. I go look at the videos. They're not even there anymore. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then he was like, yep, are we all good here now? And I was like, yep, we are. And then ever since, I haven't really talked to Louis. I think a couple times I did. Like I reached out to him just to let him know what's been going on and all this other sort of thing. But me and Louis get along now. Like there's no problem between me and louis now and um uh ever since that velocity thing too some people have tried to throw that over my head like it's like a really horrible thing you know <laughs> oh my god you mistreated your discord staff and you sat here and you you, you verbally abused them because of this this night and, and i was like all that was kind of fake bullshit it was all lies it was all perpetrated or it was blown out of proportion and it really wasn't that bad um but at the end of the day if people have negative opinions on me because of that that's fine. I entered into situations that made people be able to spin it like that. I'm not really involved in situations like that anymore, where even if people tried to spin it, it would be a lot harder to believe now. Back then, I was just a bit more naive. I didn't know what Discord was. I really didn't understand the whole YouTube and having a lot of attention and inviting random people to be your Discord staff team and interacting with them as if they're friends. I, I was really naive at the time and didn't know that that could lead to bad situations. And yeah. so did I do anything wrong? No, I I, I, to, to, I don't know if this is going to ease anything at all, but, you know, I, I, I'm a big believer in God. You know, I consider myself a Christian and I, I don't think that me going online mistreating people really lines up with any of my morals or what I was taught growing up. So again, I don't feel like I did anything wrong in those situations. If I misspoke and used a curse word that made it seem like I was a bit more aggressive than normal, there might have been some small things like that, but there was nothing at all, even remotely bad. Velocity spun things out of control, Crow did, and even Louis at times, I think, spun some things out of control to make it seem worse than what it was. But again, at the time, it's the heat of the moment. Everyone was, I, I was spinning things out of control sometimes to make things seem bigger than normal because I'm a commentary channel. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yep. I'm supposed to create hype around these drama situations. So again, I, I'm not mad at anybody for what happened during the Louis stuff at all. Not even Crow, not even Velocity. It is what it is. But just going forward, realize that I didn't really do anything wrong. And the only person that really did anything wrong was people trying to ruin my reputation, which that's kind of what Velocity did. That's kind of yeah. what Louie did. That's kind of what Crow did. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to ever forget that. So going forward, if I end up making videos on them over stuff they did, they shouldn't be mad at me because I wasn't mad at them doing it to, to, uh, to me. And ever since, I did make a video on Crow a couple times, and I have talked about him in a very negative light. And it's because I do think he does do a lot of things wrong. There's a lot of things I disagree with, but at the end of the day, that's what it is. I know this question was about Louie, though, so no, I'll, you're, I'll you're stop fine. there if fine. you have more questions. <laughs> you're, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. It's going to segue into another 
another person that's going to kind of bridge into the crossing over to the crows and all that. But uh, mm-hmm. one person that's kind of a, a link here that I've noticed, like even Twitter and stuff like that, is uh, John or Toy Bounty Hunters. And I yes. know that he was involved somewhat with the Louis situation. And um, obviously he's been involved with the crows. I mean, he was involved kind of probably more intimately recently with the Mr. Sen kind of re-exposure. Um, yeah. And so I just kind of wanted to see what your interactions were with him, what your thoughts are about him, what goes on there. Um, Cause I know there's been, I've seen a couple interactions. I know there was one where like you even called him out uh, about showing DMS with Louie and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, toy I've always gotten along with um, at first uh people refer to him as john which i got super confused because delirious people refer to delirious as john sometimes so okay. i was super serious when a guy named john was joining the call i didn't know who john was i didn't know he had a channel called toy bounty hunters so at first i didn't know who the hell he was i could really care less probably at the time um but as time moved on he started covering the delirious and on record court case and he was the only other real commentary channel covering it besides me so i got along with him and i talked to him about the court case so we could have similar notes and we could work together to try to understand what's going on and john always had connections with delirious um so toy and delirious would talk all the time and then Olmrecker would always reach out to me and chat with me about some things and i would try to reach out to delirious to be fair because i didn't want to just hear you know one person side over the other but during the court case Olmrecker really couldn't talk to me about anything anyways because it was all disclosed information. Uh, so Omi and I would just chit chat about other shit, you know, mini lad and a bunch of other, you know, drama topics, but I wasn't really hearing much from Ohm. So I would try to reach out to John to see if he heard anything from delirious and he would claim that he's not hearing anything, which I, you know, it, I'm, it's really hard to believe people online, but you know, yeah. I took him at his word at the time and we were just covering the court case, you know, that's all we were doing. And you know, we covered the Scott situation a little bit or whatever. And I always got along with toy. So, even when Crow and all of his crew was hyper against me and jumping and attacking me and, and criticizing me over all these sort of different things, Toy, I never felt really did that to me. Just like how I felt like Mr. Sen never really did that to me either. Um, Mr. Sen and Toy were kind of the people who were the nicest to me. And I, I appreciate that because I felt like I could talk to him individually and explain things if something seemed off or something seemed wrong that I did or whatever, um, which I do believe to this day. I hardly did anything wrong at all. Um, but, you know, that might just be being a little arrogant. Um, anyways, uh, me and Toy, we've been fine. And um, what kind of, kind of like, th- what, what kind of threw a wrench in all that was um, Toy was covering the Scott situation, which is uh, Liz Katz's ex husband, who she has a kid with. And um, Scott came out about a bunch of info about Delirious and Liz and his child and how he can't see his child. Scott came out about a lot of this and I have a huge video about the Scott situation, you know, or whatever. Well, Toy jumped into that, had a bunch of shit against Scott that was like, like he, he, (laughs) Toy ripped into Scott seemingly for no reason because like Toy doesn't even know Scott. He never even talked to Scott, but somehow he has all this info about Scott. So that kind of revealed, oh, we know that you have communication with delirious because that's always been a thing that you know me and even some audience members knew that hey toy talks to delirious but that kind of just like you're like okay we know that you're talking to delirious yeah so i invited toy on to like come on and live debate with me about some the the scott situation and shit like that and i pretty much asked uh you know hey do you have dms with delirious at all and he's talking goes oh some basic chit chat but that's it you know and i was like when's the last time you talked and then he was like oh not for years you know we haven't talked in a long time and then sen was in the chat and he called out toy and he was like show the dm show him right now and i was like yeah show him if you can you know i, I was being a little nicer to, during the debate you know because again toy's always been nice to me so i didn't want to like be an asshole to him and i wasn't going to but then toy showed him and he lied he lied about when they dm they were deeming about other things and he took so long to show him that everyone in the chat was saying that he was deleting messages like there's no way you take this long to show dms kind of there's like no a way and he took matt jarbo folder stream situation yeah kind of thing. yeah yeah he's just taking his time he's like oh hold on got the wrong thing well how do you got the wrong thing you know your dms with delirious on discord are pretty easy to pull up and so it took him like 20 minutes to pull him up and by the time he pulled him up 
he had like conversations like a few days ago or last week or like a month ago with him. And so he was lying about when he had DMs last with him just for this. You know, he goes, oh, that's my bad, my bad. I made a mistake. And everyone in the chat was grilling him. That's sort of what caused Toy to no longer be associated with me or talk about this type of drama. And now he's I don't know what he's doing now. He's probably uploading about Power Rangers or whatever the fuck he talks about. Um, but that led to Crow being mad at me again because I wanted to still talk to Toy about the Scott situation because a lot of things have changed since. And I wanted to update him because we had me and Toy had private calls about it. We were both really interested in it, like privately when we just chatted. He was interested in it. So I wanted to chat with him more about that. And then he refused to reach out to me after that stream. And I guess Sen being there, being an asshole to him didn't help toy want to talk to me at all and crow found me to be just like sen just trying to stir the pot and cause drama and piss people off and i had to explain to crow no i just wanted to chat with him and so when i went on to the pit uh i think it's the pit yeah. chronic echo or whatever yeah. um he and he ended up you know, i talked to crow on there and i was like kind of debating chatting with him on there uh crow said that he would try to reach out to toy and let me know and ever since this day Crows never reached out to me and told me anything about it. Neither is Toy, neither is Aura, neither is Steve to leave. I've reached out to all of them. And they, to this day, they still haven't reached back out to me. And some of them I just messaged like a few months ago. Um, I'd say a few months ago, maybe like a month or two ago. But yeah, they all refuse to chit chat with me. And I don't know why. I know they're online. I know they're active. I see them posting. Steve to leave does a live stream every other fucking night. I, I know they're <laughs> active. They could reach out to me. They just refuse to. And again, a lot of it could be because of what happened with Sen. But why are you guys afraid with Sen? You guys just exposed him for fucking liking Lolly and doing all this other bullshit. Why are you afraid of him? And why do you think he's so closely tied to me? You know, that that's kind of like the weird thing. But anyways, me and Toy, I'm still on good terms with Toy as long as he's on good terms with me. And yeah, I had a couple mishaps with him, uh, especially when he was in the call with Louie and they were both threatened to sue me. Uh, even John was speaking up threatening to sue me, you know, yeah. not like he was going to sue me, but he was threatening. Oh, yeah, Louie's going to sue you if you don't do this. So I, I, I've had some bad interactions with him, but I've always looked past that. And so, OK, he's a decent guy. He told me at one point in a private call that he has a kid and how his life's going and everything like that, which, again, apparently that was a big no, no to mention if he had a kid. But Sen did reveal it or somebody or maybe red ski or so someone mentioned it online and that was like a big like no no like the crow and toy and the rest of them hate that they mentioned that he had a kid but i think you know just from my interactions i even told crow this toy told me a long time ago that he had a kid and he didn't really tell me to keep it private or anything which i know you're not supposed to just go out and say everything that someone tells you but yeah he I, I I I knew that ever since that I started talking to him, and I swear to God, I heard him talk about it during a live stream at one point. I could be wrong, but I always knew he had a kid, and he was always pretty open with me about his life. I opened up about my life about Toy, and Toy's never used that against me, so I was never going to bring, bring up his kid at all uh, in a public atmosphere. Yeah. But the fact that Redski did, and it was a big point, I just tried telling Crow, like, hey, it's not that big of a deal. They, if they didn't reveal the name of the kid, it's fine. He, he's dad. Okay, whatever. Not that big of a deal. Just move on. But Crow really had it as a big issue. Like, oh, he just didn't want to reveal he had a kid. It doesn't really fucking matter. Like, yeah, yes, he has what, a kid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. It, yeah, exactly. It doesn't change. Anything. If I say, hey, Crow, you have a cousin, you know, is that, oh my God, that's so bad. You know, it, it's not, you know, it, 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 you're, Crow, you're older. If I said that you had a kid, even though you didn't, it wouldn't affect anything really because Crow's a lot older than me. Of course, he probably has a kid. You know, that's just a normal thing to think about. So, again, it's not really that big of a deal. As long as Red Ski and the Red, if they were using it for like, to try to go after toy and hurt him, then I disagree with that completely. I don't support those actions, but I don't think they were. I think they just mentioned it at one time for like a joke and they all got mad apparently about it. And toys told me, you know, without like being cautious at all that he had, he told me that he had a kid. So like, like I thought it was just common knowledge conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was just common knowledge. Like, I thought, you know, maybe Toy mentioned it during a live stream and said, oh, yeah, my kid's doing well. I just had to take my kid to do this and that. And it's just basic shit. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But anyways, that's my whole relationship with Toy. I'm still on good terms with him, but it's just like we had a couple rocky patches here and there. He's definitely one of the nicer people out of the whole crows of judgment crew that I've had. Okay. And, and that kind of leads me into my next point here, which is, you know, um, can you kind of like maybe give me 
um, a history of you and the crows? Because I know a lot of this stuff that we've already talked about is going to cross over with the crows, and I do want to talk about them. So, like, where did where did you and the crows first cross paths? Um, it was I I don't remember specifically what situation or what it was. I think it was right around the Omrick or Delirious drama. I think that's when it was. It could have been the mini lad stuff because it was all fall of 2020, spring of 2021 when I started getting a lot more attention and I started interacting with more commentary channels. So I think it was either fall of 2020 or spring of 2021. I had some sort of live stream that popped up in my recommended or, or, or no, somebody on discord reached out to me and said, Hey, they want you to have you because they just reviewed your video. I think it was spring of 2021 because I think they were covering the Ulm Wrecker, um, interview and they, they, they reacted to it on their channel and somebody in their, ch like one of them maybe said, Hey, can someone like find out how to reach out to this TJV guy? Like let's have him on the, on the show so he can talk to us. And so I got reached out to, to join and I was super excited. This is like the first time I'm going on someone else's channel to talk about what I did on mine. Like, I felt like a fucking celebrity. Like, it was like the Tonight <laughs> Show. Like, I felt great. I was like, hell yeah, let's do this. So I went in there. I had so much fun with them, like chit-chatting. And they were hyper against Omaker. I was kind of against Omaker at the time. We were all getting along. Everything was great. Um, so like that was the first interaction and then they kept inviting me back for like small things here and there. And so I always had a good time going over there. Like, yeah, they were a little toxic, a little bit on the dark side of humor, kind of not what I do over on my channel, but I still had a lot of fun with that. And then it all led to that Louie situation. When I, when I made a video about Louie, they all flipped immediately flipped and they started pinpointing every little, like I said, at one point I said, good luck moderating the chat to one of their mods. Yep. <laughs> and they, Kay, Kayla freaked out. What'd you mean by this? Are you threatening something? I was just like, no, I said, good luck because I have a lot more viewers than you. And I'm telling everyone during my live stream, I'm going to be on your channel later tonight and that you guys have disagreements with me. So I'm saying good luck. Cause you guys are going to have a lot more traffic than normal. I thought that was very clear, but they, every little thing they pin part like, Oh, nope, that's a problem. Nope. You did this. That was wrong. That was wrong. And it got to the point where, yes, I didn't handle myself the best at the time. I was kind of all over the place, but I felt attacked because I, I, it felt like a safe space for the longest time to go over there and just have some fun. And then now they're all against me and they're not really giving me the benefit of the doubt and trying to understand what I'm getting at. Even if I was wrong, they could have like sat down and said, like, okay, I get what you're meaning at, but do you understand that there's more information that maybe you're not seeing? Because there's probably information I have not seen that they saw from Louie. It's Crow and them, they always hung out with Louie and stuff like that. So if they knew more about the Louie stuff because Louie showed them stuff, I would have never known that. And they could have told me privately as somebody who went onto their show and, you know, had some good interactions with them. And I've always been polite to them. They could have done that to me because I would have done that to them 100%. I would have been like, hey, you have this opinion. I think it's wrong personally, but I think there's just stuff you're not shown yet. I wouldn't have shown them if because that could have been a conflict with whoever showed you the info in the first place. But I would have said, hey, there's probably more info that you just don't know about. Just be cautious. And if they would have told me that, I would have been a lot more careful and we could have gotten along. But they, I don't think they were looking to be acquaintances. I think they were looking at, oh, he's on the other side. We have to go after that. And I don't like that mentality. Just because somebody's on the other side, I have never had a problem. Like I've had own record fans and delirious fans on my channel, and I've never chosen a side. I've always sat here and said, okay, if you support delirious, all right, that's fine. Hopefully you can be here and learn something new and maybe change your opinion if delirious is not what it seems. But on the other side, if people are fans of Omer, or, hey, you got to understand, he hasn't acted the best. So just understand that there's a whole other side to this. I've always opened up to like, hey, there's multiple people with multiple different views, but we can all get along and just chit chat about this drama and, and, and have commentary about it. Yeah, and not make over an echo on chamber Gross. for any certain side We're of it. Right. And I feel like over at Crows, everyone agrees with everybody. There's never disagreement there. And that's why over on my channel, yes, I've had the Omer interview where me and him disagree on everything. I've had Louie come over and I disagreed with a lot of stuff with Louis and I told him that. Um, Delirious and Liz were happening in the chat. I disagreed with them at one point as well. There's been a lot of people that came over to the channel to join the live, even sent Mr. Sen and Chilled Venom. I've disagreed with them. I've brought in viewers who have disagreements and I pulled them into the live chat. I've never been afraid of that con confrontation of like disagreements of views because that that that's kind of what people enjoy they want to see okay what side is it and are there sides being represented in the live stream or video over on crows if you don't agree with crow you're not going to watch crow 
Trust yeah. me. Like, if you have completely different views than him, he's not for you. And that's, I thought Crow would have been open to like, okay, yeah, TGV has difference of opinion, but, you know, we can still get along with him and invite him over. No, I was like blacklisted from over there. Like they would not, when I went to go comment in their live streams, they would not even reference my comments or in the live at all. If I went over to, um, um, you know, if, if I went to go DM them, they wouldn't respond to me. They still don't to this day. If I tweeted at them, if I mentioned them in one of my videos, they wouldn't react to it no more. They kind of blacklisted me from ever like talking or reviewing anything that I did anymore. And I felt like that was just because we're it, it, difference in opinion and we never came to an agreement. We never settled it. And when I went over to talk to e like go on the chronic echo channel, um, and, uh, talk to on the pit live stream or whatever, and talk to crow for the first time in a long time. I, that was the first time I've gotten to talk to him and he was actually a little civil. But even then, when we started chatting about what happened before, he would say, eh, that's not exactly how it happened. And I'd be like, yeah. it literally is. You still have the video up to the, to this day. There was some things he was getting completely wrong. And I was like, hey, I was stating my opinion about the Louis situation. Crow would be like, eh, no, y y it wasn't just your opinion. You were stating it as a fact. And I was like, no, I said that I believe that it is true. I believe it is a fact that those ideas are real. It's just my opinion, though, at the end of the day, because if there's info that's debunking that and I haven't seen it, but you have, I just have the wrong opinion. I have the wrong take on it. But I didn't know that at the time. And I was trying to explain that to Crow. And Crow was just like, eh, that's not exactly how it went. And it, literally, he still has videos up to this day about it and that's yeah. what sucks about me not having those louis louis videos anymore is i wish i had them so i could just dis disprove everyone hey look at this is what i said during the video <laughs> and actually I, I i i found part of crow's um live stream talking about my video where i do say in the video in my opinion when i'm talking about like calling louis a pdf file and all that stuff so i have that uh screen grab of that just to ever prove if people said, eh, no, it wasn't your opinion. I was like, it clearly was my opinion. That's why I said, in the video. yeah, even people at the time had a problem saying, Hey, you shouldn't state in your opinion. If someone's a PDF file and maybe I shouldn't, but I'm just clarifying. I'm not definitively calling him one because we have evidence against him. I'm just saying there is plenty of evidence there. If those IDs are real, if those yeah. IDs are real. Yeah. What he said in the Snapchat is not okay to be talking to a minor about yeah. But and if those IDs are fake, Louis in the clear. It's one of those things, it kind of comes down to a personal opinion, like you're saying. I mean, like, okay, would you have this guy watch your kids if you had kids? I mean, like, I've seen that used a lot more recently. And it's like, that's just a reaffirmation of the opinion. Um, but I, I right. know I watched... But, uh, but, but, Go ahead, I apologize. Oh, it's okay. But at the end of the day, I never wanted to use that reaffirmation about Louis because I never wanted to paint Louis in that way. I just wanted to know the truth at the end of the day. And then when I got so much backlash for it, I just when my videos were gone, I just never talked about it again. The reasoning why is because I just don't want to dive into that. I just wanted to know the truth. Like, hey, did Louis do these things? Because if he didn't, then that's fine. And Louis, after the fact, always reached out to me and he tried to reassure the fact that those weren't real and that, hey, we're on good terms. Hopefully you don't think of me in a negative way. And Louis gets gets along with me to this day like if i have to reach out to him for something he'll respond and like i have a hundred percent confidence in that you know it, after the whole uh uh the pit thing with crow i reached out to louis about crow because crow was lying about a bunch of stuff he said that louis or somebody said that i received cease and desist from Lu like louis like louis sent me cease and desist and i asked crow where'd you hear that from because that's not true and he goes i think i heard it from louis and I was like, oh, OK, so I reached out to Louie and I was just like, hey, you, do you understand Crow spreading these lies and like kind of stirring the pot between us again? Because the shit ain't true. And I just want to be, be it put to rest. And if Crow is just on his high horse because he got along with you a lot, it might be, have to be something you talk about. And Louie talked to me about all that stuff. So like I could still get along with Louie to this day, despite our differences. And Louie had every reason to be mad at me. Yeah. Crow has no reason to like be this mad at me and not talk to me. He could totally like resolve it. But the fact that he's not, it just it, it's leading to this video I have coming up. And I guess you're going to hear about it first publicly. But um, I have this video about Crow where a lot of his past is uncovered with his brother and other shit that's going on. And I'm going to be talking about it. Um, I, I again, it's still in very early stages because I'm trying to get all the most accurate information because I don't want to spread lies about Crow. That's my not my goal. But I can understand why Crow is so you know, kind of on ADHD when he's talking about some of these things and he's kind of all over the place. It's because like, he's always been this way and that's kind of what his past shows. And he's kind of been flip floppy on topics. He's been wrong about a lot of things. He just doesn't like to admit that he's wrong or he doesn't like to point out the fact that, you know, he's not Mr. Perfect. Like he sometimes puts out to be, um, but yeah, that's sort of like the whole history with Crow. And I've had I issues with Kayla, um, but only during like some of the Crow live streams or, uh, 
I've I think I've had a couple teams with him. I don't have any bad blood with him. It's just I do think he's just as wrong as Crow is sometimes. Steve Deleve, I think, is like a completely awful person. I don't know why they associate with him. Like I've heard a lot of bad things about him, and I've seen a lot of bad things about him. Um, and I think his demeanor too is completely awful. But again, if that's who they want to hang out, that's fine. Toy's fine. Sen again, he was fine up until the whole lolly shit that came out. I kind of separated myself from him because of that. And then Child Venom, I've always gotten along with. And then a few of Sen's friends like Redski, GGF, and I've gotten along with them too. I've never had bad blood with any of them. Okay, okay. And then, um, so yeah, I, I remember I, I've recently watched just to kind of refresh with that. I know there was a lot of semantics that were played with that whole uh, ousting of you, the the public, like the real first feud between you and the Crows, where like, uh, just yeah. want to clear a couple things up. Like, so apparently there was a whole, there was like 20 minutes of conversation surrounding death threats. And the fact that, like, you had primered your audience saying, don't go to this person and issue death threats or anything like that. Do you want to explain yeah. or elaborate any more on that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the funniest <laughs> things about Crow. So uh, let me just say this. If I sit here and I state, hey, don't go around sending death threats, hate harassment towards an individual. Is that wrong of me to say in like a YouTube video if I'm talking about, let's say you, let's say I'm making a video about Strictly Patrick and I say, hey, I'm going to talk about him sometimes in favorable light, sometimes not in a favorable light. Don't go around saying harassment, death threat, hate because of this video. Is that a bad thing for me to say? Put that disclaimer. Out no, there. no. And I've actively said that to my audience and I have nothing for an right. audience. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure that you saw in that first thing with um, the whole beef I had with Crow in that first live stream or whatever that they invited me on to sort of debate me and call me out on it. Um, they they cover that for a long time. And, and a lot of people like people in my comment sections always have a problem with that disclaimer. They say, if your videos aren't harmful from the get go, you don't even have to say that. Like, why do you have to say that in the first place? I was like, well, I'm saying it because I've made videos talking about topics in a very civil way most of the time. And people would come back and say, hey, this video is garnishing hate towards an individual. One of the people was Omrecker because I was making a lot of anti Omrecker videos when he was calling out the crew because I think he did it in a very awful way. I think, you know, he might have he might have had good intentions with it, but he did it in a very awful way. And when I made videos about Omrecker, Omrecker was telling me that he gets hate comments every day and death threats every day. And his dog is getting threatening and his girlfriend girlfriend's name got exposed by Delirious Delirious Docs, his girlfriend's name, and she was getting death threats. And so I then started using that disclaimer on pretty much any drama video I made because I just wanted to do that extra step to protect those people who I'm making videos on, even if they are awful people. I don't, I don't, this isn't a hate, like, oh, this isn't a mob channel. Like, as soon as I make a video, go after the person. That's not what this channel is. It's just to inform individuals on what's going on and to give my opinion of it because people are sometimes fond of others' opinions and, you know, from my history of doing commentary, people do like to hear my opinion on it. So having said that, um, I, I started using that disclaimer for some reason, Crow and the Kayla and Aura and the rest of them fucking hated me doing that <laughs> for some reason. And they would always point out, well, if your video isn't hateful or harmful, you shouldn't have to use the disclaimer. And it was just so dumb of an argument. Like it, I don't understand it. And there's not a good explanation I can give on why they're trying to bring that up. Like, I don't see it because like if somebody's actively saying don't do a thing, it ain't because they want people to go do that thing. It isn't because their video is that thing. Like the, if they're saying actively don't do that, it's probably because other people have taken the video too far or past videos too far. And they're just trying to avoid another situation like that. And I've always told people over and over again um, uh, that if somebody is doing something because of my video, tell me and I will publicly call them out. I'll call them out on every social media platform I have. Like, yeah. I don't support people sending death threats. I don't support people harassing or doxing. And if somebody is doing that, tell me. Because I'll publicly call them out. I'll condone it. Like, or, or, or I'll condemn it. I mean, yeah. um, and and that's kind of what happened with the Halley situation, too, is that she, I told her uh, she, she was receiving backlash because one of my videos or whatever. This was like the last interaction I had with her, like a few, like earlier this year. And um somebody was like going after her because of my video and I sat here and I was like, well, I'll publicly like condemn them. And, and I said in my video, I said a disclaimer not to do it. And she was just like, I don't give a fuck. If you say it, nobody's going to listen to you. You're a fucking nobody. Nobody cares. 
And I was like, well, that, clearly my video is important to somebody if they're willing to watch yeah. it and then go after you. And I will publicly go against that. Tell me the individuals who are doing it. And she wouldn't tell me. And I think most of the time when people say that they have people going after them, they maybe really don't. They just have a few comments or criticisms that they don't like. And then they make up, oh, people are going after me and doing all this shit. Now, again, I don't want to take away because I bet there are people going after Ali. And I completely disagree with that. And I don't agree with that at all. Um, but at the same time, we're on the same side. We're both against that. So don't get mad at those individuals who are just trying to help you. Like she wanted my video taken down, but I don't let anyone take down my videos, especially after Louis threatened me with a lawsuit. I will never do that again because that's evidence. I could have used that evidence to this day to still clear my name on a lot of that shit. But to this day, some people said that I, I went after Louis and I called him a pedo and I didn't use any evidence and I randomly believe the girls, but it's not. I told you during this video, you understand that I looked at pieces of evidence and I formed my opinion and I wish I had that evidence to this day. So I vowed that I will never delete a video just because somebody told me to. I will never fucking do that. Even if a lawyer tells me to, I'm not fucking doing it. Yeah. Like they're going to have to take me to jail, confiscate my computer, go onto my account and delete it for them to do it. <laughs> like I would rather sit in the jail cell than delete evidence that's going to protect me. And so I will never do that again. That's why I didn't do it for Hallie. I, I, and I, but I was so nice and respectful saying, I'm not trying to do this to hurt you. And I'm not trying to be backhanded with this. I'm just telling you, I won't delete the video. I'm sorry. And everyone's like, oh, you're just doing it for money because you want to keep the video out for money. Most of my videos are fucking demonetized. Again, I use, <laughs> I get most of my money from memberships. Um, but even then, even if I was doing it for money, I have the right to do that. And you have no right to say I can't. And again, it's just the world we live in. That's why I love America. People are going to get mad at you for anything if you don't listen, but you have the freedom to do what you want. And I respect those who exercise that because it's really hard to exercise that, especially if you have a lot of attention and people are just wanting you to do the other thing completely. Yeah. And I, I, I think it's honestly a good thing to set that standard with any audience because I can reflect back and point back to you just for my audience. Like the Illy, the was the Illymation situation and there was a guy yeah. that made a video on her and he offered them most mild of criticism. Illymation got death threats and everything else and then people went back at him for not saying that. So I think there's a standard that can be shown for both ways. You know, if, if Crow wants to sit there and say that, oh, you shouldn't have to say this if your video is not that bad, there's a situation that I can point to directly where someone didn't say it and the audience took it into their own hands and it's kind of setting a standard for your audience of like, no, Man. here's my thoughts, here's my beliefs. Right. And and at the end of the day, I don't have to put a disclaimer. I don't have to tell people that I just do that because I care about other human beings and I don't wish that upon other people. So like I, I could go my entire like if I could go back and change everything and I let's say I never put the disclaimer in any of my videos. I, I still would hold the standpoint same point to this day and I should not get any flack because at the end of the day, people doing stuff based off a YouTube video is not the person who made the YouTube videos fault. Like you're not going to blame. Like if someone gives a speech, they don't have to put a disclaimer not to do anything. If somebody does something because of a speech, it ain't the person who gave the speech. It ain't their fault. It's the person who did it. Everyone has to own their own actions and what they do. Nobody's forcing anyone to do it just because they made a YouTube video. So anyone who uses that, I think is completely well, again, I'm not, I want to get away from insults, but, you know, a little soft brand, you know, their brain's a little <laughs> softer than the, than the next person's because they're not understanding, hey, you're responsible for what you do, just like how that individual who came to, you know, be a jackass in your comments and say horrible things to you. That ain't my fault. You know, yes, it's one of my audience members, maybe who came from my channel, but I didn't tell them to do that. You know, if anything, I said the exact opposite, you know, and I, again, I think that's a very important part to. Uh, mentioned but i'm glad i'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people don't go back and look at that live stream for that moment they look at a lot of people go back to that live stream to comment something bad about me but that, that's a really good thing to point out <laughs> well and there was another thing that was kind of semantic and it's going to lead into another question but there was the whole victim versus victims argument and that carried on for an extreme amount of time <laughs> um, and does it yeah. seem to you that like have you noticed like the crows being very very semantic about stuff uh, when they're trying to go at somebody yeah uh, it, it, it's so weird because like when when i started doing commentary um i kind of just wanted to do more generalized videos i didn't want them to be long i didn't want to dive into individual like little semantic things like oh this thing and this thing and that thing and blah 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 um, but I think that's just like 
I think that's just a little bit of an issue with commentary. So I, I won't throw it too much at Crow and them for the whole semantics thing, but it does get super annoying if people go after the little things, even if like you misspoken, like, like a lot of the times, like I did right during this interview with you, I accidentally said condone instead of condemn that that's something that I've always had a problem with. They're very similar words, like, like in terms of how they're spelled and how they're said, yep. but they have two completely different meanings. Condone is to approve of what someone's doing. Condemn is to be in disapproval of what someone's doing. And I, I've all the time, like, I remember when I sent a message to Hallie, I said, I'll publicly con condone all the people doing horrible things to you. And I meant to say condemn. So I edit the message and I put condemn, but when she screenshotted it, it was condone. So people thought that I was publicly supporting those going after her. And it was just an accident that I did. It wasn't, ac it wasn't, but it's these little semantic things that people are going to s latch on to. And there's little semantic things people have against me and, and they're going to hold on to it for the rest of their lives. And that's fine. I, I, again, if people are willing to do that, I was never going to win them over in the first place so if crow and the rest of them are all about these little itty bitty issues that's just the type of person they are they're always going to be like that there's nothing to change it at the end of the day i wanted to always focus on the bigger picture like okay is this person an actual danger to kids that's what's important not let's dive into every little message that he sent you know let's not dive into every little thing that he sent oh he mentioned a gun here he must love guns you know it's just, it's just <laughs> those are just little small things that really don't matter at the end of the day it's just what, what matters is what was your overall opinion do you approve of this person or not are you giving the benefit of the doubt to this person or not? And that, yeah, I, I think that, but I think again, like I said, I think that's a problem with commentary channels in general. You kind of fall into the little semantics game. That's kind of what you fall into doing commentary. And you got to be careful not to fall too deep into that. Cause if you do, you come off as annoying and you, you're focused too much on the little things and you're not really grasping the big picture of what this situation is doing for example the doctor disrespect thing i'm not trying to fall into semantics but if he did put in his post that he admitted to messaging a minor that's a big deal you know that's yeah. a semantic that you've got to worry about that's yeah. one little thing in his twitter post that you got to keep 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 in mind but the little semantics about like you know like oh was it this inappropriate thing or was it that inappropriate thing it doesn't matter he had inappropriate conversations with a minor that's wrong yeah. you know was it th about this or was it about that no it, it doesn't matter like that that's a little semantics in my opinion big picture is he harmful towards kids yes he is he is because he had inappropriate con anyone who has an inappropriate conversation with a minor is dangerous to children even if it's not sexual it, it's still inappropriate it's dangerous you shouldn't be talking to children about that and he was doing that so again it, it's kind of dangerous at the end of the day i don't blame crawl a lot for that but yes he is they are all really annoying that they choose to dive into every little thing there and it's just kind of what they do though you know I, I've done it too before, so I, I, I'm, I'm just as fault for it because I, I, I used to do it a lot too. Well, and this kind of brings me around to something that it's kind of been an interesting question on my mind. It's actually not on my question list, but what are your thoughts about the whole, um, the Crows obviously originally had the Mr. Sen, Senpai is home kind of exposed stream. And that was, I think, three years yeah. ago, roughly. And then they now recently yeah. done it again. I know you've talked with uh, Crow on Chthonic Stream and all that. And so I yeah. kind of want to see what your thoughts are on like them rehashing dead or what should have been a dead and done topic, in my opinion. All right. And I, I think it should have been dead and done three years ago, but they did it so badly three years ago that they kind of needed to redo it. And the problem with it is that when I first got interaction with Sen, I already knew Crow and all of them really well. Like I've already been over the stream multiple times and I saw Sen there and I interacted with Sen, but I've had people over the years tell me, Oh, Sen's a bad guy. He's done this, this and that, but there was no clear video to go look besides Crow's video and Crow's video. They're joking with him as if, Oh yeah, these are all jokes. He's all good. He's all fine. He's still one of our friends. And he was actively live streaming every single day for like two to three years with them. So, Again, the problem is, is that I think morals aren't really consistent over there. And that's the that's a problem that you can have if your morals aren't really consistent. If, if, if you allow this pedophile to still hang out with you, but then don't allow this pedophile any grace, then, you, you know, it's going to be a conflict of interest. Your audience will turn on you really quick and you'll be known as somebody who is shilling for your friends or people, you know, that you favor and then disregarding those who don't. And that's something that I've always wanted to stay consistent of. People have tried to throw um, pedophile allegations towards Omrecker over the years, and they've all been uh, incorrect and wrong. But I've always given the benefit of the doubt to him 
to Miniland to uh, Delirious to anyone who had pedophile allegations because at the end of the day, if you look at something and they admitted to it, okay, they admitted to it. That, that, that's the end of the story. But if there's evidence that hasn't been fully proven yet, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not labeling them as a pedophile. And, th and that, that's very important. Sen, on the other hand, admitted to these lollicons. He 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 was attracted to drawn images of children, which again people say Lollicon's not a pedophile, but at the end of the day, you're still attracted to children. It's just in cartoon form and not in real life. In my opinion, that's a pedophile. Um, and and Sen understands this. He he respects that I have a, the same consistent moral um, opinion about it, um, even though I don't talk to him and I don't interact with him at all anymore. Um, but. Crow, on the other hand, he was actively calling out all these other pedophiles while hanging out with one. And Crow even admitted during the pit live stream that, yes, Sen is a pedophile. Well, if he admits today that Sen's a pedophile, that means he's been hanging out and harboring and, and protecting this pedophile for years on his live stream. And I think that the fact that they had to come out and call him out again, and the only reason why they did it is because Sen was going after Toy. Oh, so you were protecting him up until he crossed you. And then when he crossed you, you sat here and called him out and made a lot more serious of a stream than what you did three years ago. That's fucked up. That is completely fucked up. That is blackmail. And not only is it blackmail against a pedophile, which most people wouldn't care that it's blackmail against a pedophile, but the fact that other people have been accused of the same fucking shit too. Like Aura and Kayla were protecting another guy who's also been exposed as a pedophile as well. And then Steve to leave was getting involved in shit that was not very favorable either. And Crow was just hanging around with this giant group of people who were all involved in some sort of fucked up shit or protecting somebody with fucked up shit. Like, I think it was Steve to leaves ex or something like Maya. She was yeah. like making pedophile jokes or, 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 or saying really fucked up shit about children or whatever. Like it was all this bullshit that, that they've been doing for the last few years. And at the end of the day, Crow wants to stand the moral high ground and say, this is wrong for Sen to do. You were protecting it. You turned a blind eye to it. Whatever you want to say, girl, that's what you did. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that if you're not going to be consistent and you're not still going to hang out with Sen and be cool with him despite all this lollicon shit, then you, you were wrong the last three years. And I hope Crow fixes it going forward and has a whole new moral stance and sticks to it and stays consistent to it. Because it's, it's important on the internet. People will eat you alive. Your audience will. Everyone will if you're not consistent. But at the end of the day, if you make mistakes, I understand that. But everything should be pitch perfect from this point on like squeaky clean from this point on if it's not and you don't really care then you should not care about the criticism you should not care about the backlash you should be willing to accept all the the negative consequences that come with that and i think crow kind of does accept it that's why that like it's not that big of a deal like if crow was bitching and whining and trying to you know uh you know um disprove or, or defute all this sort of stuff going after him then it would be i think a little bit of a bigger issue but the fact that he just sort of accepts it like oh yeah i know there's gonna be negative consequences with what we've done the last few years then it's fine it, it, it's it's whatever it, it it doesn't stop people from especially me wanting to make a video still criticizing it to this day but it is something that really bugs me that three years ago you could have just cut him off and label him as okay this guy is a danger to children because he's attracted to Child, like children cartoons in a very sexual way and he was saving the lolly and sending it back like Sen was like he had lolly on his fucking phone because he sent it back through discord too in, in the dms um so the fact that all this shit was happening and then for the last for the next three years they've been um they've been like hanging out with him and live streaming and making videos and doing all this sort of thing with him having them in little private group chats and vcs and all this other shit and then then now wants to cut him off because Sen is mad at Toy and Crow for whatever shit that they whatever drama they have between them. I don't know. It's all very shady to me. It's all very wrong. And yes, Sen is to blame for doing the pedo shit. I'm not taking anything away from him. But Crow's also to blame and the rest of them for hanging around with a pedo, somebody that they call out on their channel almost every other week. They call out pedos all the time. So what the hell are you doing hanging out with one, too? It's very inconsistent, in my opinion. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to assume that, like, you never originally saw the Mr. Based off of, like, everything you just said to me, I'm going to assume you never saw the Mr. Sen kind of roast stream. I forget what the hell they even called it. The exposed of Mr. Sen, the original one, while you were um, interacting with Mr. Sen. So um, I guess how did, how did you come across it? Did you see the most recent stream, and that's kind of where you had a conversation with him and it changed your opinion or how did, how did that process go with your uh, right. breakup, so to speak with Mr. Sun? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
There, there's somebody in my Discord server, one of my staff members, who always say, um, Mr. Sen's my boyfriend as a joke. She always jokes about <laughs> this. But with you saying break up there, I know she's probably going to timestamp this later when she sees it and <laughs> make, make a lot of jokes about that. Um, but no, um, it, I have this person, I think, called Mendicate or someone in my live chat. And I had Mr. Sen in my stream like a month or two before Crow came out with the newest live stream calling out Sen. And Mendicate was saying, oh, Sen's done all this awful shit. He's like a pedo. He's like all this. And I said, OK, send me information about it. I'll review it after the stream. This isn't the time to talk about it because we were talking like a lot about, about a lot of different topics and stuff like that. And I said, we'll talk about it sometime later. And um, she I don't think she ever sent anything to me. I think she just talked to Mr. Sen in a group. It was me, Sen and Mendicate all in a group chat. And they just talked it, hashed it out. And I never got it sent a video. So I was like, oh, OK, so I guess it was nothing. And I over the years, I've always been sent shit about Mr. Sen. But it, it, it was so weird because he went as Mr. Sen when I knew him. But they were calling him Senpoi yep. or a bunch of these other names that Senpai I had no called, idea what. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't I didn't know if it was the same person, because when I asked Mr. Sen, I don't know if he told me yes or no, if, it, if that was also him. But most of the time he just brushed it off like, oh, yeah, that's just people who hate me. And I understood that because there's people who hate me that made up shit, too. So, like, I, I didn't look too deep because I didn't know what was real, what was not And there was no video out at the time that was really hammering home, like, all this. And because when you do a YouTube search or a Google search of this, the, the top result isn't the evidence. You have to, like, dig for it. And it turns out uh, Crow's brother had it on a channel that didn't get a lot of views. So whenever I looked for it, I couldn't find that video. Like, I never watched it. It was just recently when I when I've talking to Crow's brother, I, I found the original video that Crow and them made the live stream on Sin about three years ago. And so I was like, oh, this would have been nice to know years ago. So I would have known who Sen was from the get go. This would have been nice to know. Um, but no, I, I didn't find out about it until it was right around the time that Crow made the newer live stream. I found out about it and I found out about all this, all these screenshots and stuff like that. And then Crow called me out in the chat because I, I sat here and I put like a laughing emoji because someone told a joke. I, I think it was like toy bounty hunter. He told, he told jokes. I put a laughing emoji and I was reacting in the chat like everyone else was. And uh, Crow highlighted my comment uh, onto the live stream and sat here and goes, oh, TJV. If he ends up coming to your stream, don't get mad at me for calling you out and saying you condone this type of behavior because, you know, now you know the truth about Mr. Sen. You better not be fucking hanging out with him anymore. And I was just like, wait, dude, this dude hung out with him for three fucking years knowing the truth. And now he's going to get <laughs> mad at me because I've only known him for the last year. And I and he doesn't come on my streams as much as he did Crows. So it, you know, I, it really rubbed me the wrong way, which made me make my video that was anti Sen, anti Crow, anti Aura, anti Kayla. It was anti all of them. It was uh, against all of them. Yeah. But it, it, that's what initiated my video to be made about all of them, uh, which really does expose like the level of um, hypocrisy and 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 dumb-witted thinking that they all sort of had during the last three years and up to recently they all like held a moral high ground when you guys all hung out with him and were cool with him and were like best buds with him like i've seen the dms between sen and them because sen showed me i know that you guys got along with him and were like fucking like good friends with them there was no doubt in my fucking mind that you guys were because i've seen it and so you guys want to act like, oh, yeah, we're hyper against the dude now. Yeah, it's a real flip up now. The moment he's calling you guys out. Yeah, now you guys want to be against him. But you guys were best fucking buds with him for the last three years. And if he never went after you, you would have never made this live stream calling him out, which would have prevented a lot of people from like distancing themselves from Sen. Now that they know he's a lollycon or a pedo or whatever you want to call him. So, um, yeah, I found out about it during Crow's most recent stream. And um, when I found out more info about it, it only disgusts me more. And Sen actually reached out to me, I think, the same day or the day after Crow's most recent stream. And he reached out to me saying, hey, if you don't want to interact with me going forward, I understand. I haven't been honest with you. I haven't been honest with a lot of people. I'm allowing you and anyone else who's close to me um, to walk away. And that kind of confused me because I was never really close with Sen. We had a lot of talks. Yes, we've talked about our own private lives with each other. But I, I would consider myself closer with like certain members of the Vanos crew that I've talked to rather than Sen. Because I've talked I, I talk to them way more like I talk to Sen maybe once every once every other week at the most. But that only went on for like a month or two. And then we wouldn't talk for a long time. So, like, it was very, very rare that we talked. We may have had, like, 10 calls a year, you know, for the last two years I've known him. 
So it, it's and some of the calls, yes, would be longer. Yes, we've played games together back but way before all this shit, but it wasn't like we were best buds. I, I, I didn't even consider him my friend. I considered getting along with him would be good for my image if he ever was against me. Like, hey, I, at least I treated him nice. At least I was respectful. And that's how I viewed Sen. That's how I viewed Chilled Venom. That's how I viewed Redsky. I got along with them just in case they, there was someone making up fake bullshit about me. They would give me the benefit of the doubt because I've been nice to them. That's the only reason why I really got along with all of them. And that's how why what I do to get along with everyone. Like like you you for example, I'm being nice to you just in case like if somebody made a fake story about me, you would be <laughs> like, okay, I'm gonna reach out to him because he's nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. I wouldn't consider you and me friends just because we're chatting about all this. Um so yeah, again, I, I have online friends. Most of them are my Discord, most of them are my staff team. Those are my friends. Mr. Sen, all these commentary channels, none of them are my fucking friends. Um, but it was painted that way a lot. And it, it gets joked around about a lot, but it, it is getting painted as that when people want to try to criticize me. And so when Sen told me, hey, if you want to not interact with me, that's fine. Um, I sent a long paragraph explaining that I'm not. And it's in my YouTube video as well. Yeah. And I tell him, yeah, yeah, I consider you a pedophile. I'm sorry, but this is the, the way it is. I've had a lot of good interactions with you. You've always been nice to me, even back when you had every reason to be mad and join Crow and the hate mob against me. You still decided to talk to me normal and be civil with me. And I said, I will always give you respect for that, but I'm not going to respect you because you're attracted to children, or at least you were at one point when you were above the age of 18, um, even if it was a cartoon. And to this day, I told him I'll keep open dms with you just in case i need to reach out to you for context because he is involved in a lot of the drama that i am and especially with crow and i said i'll keep open dms with you if i ever need to reach out to you but i'm not going to be calling you to chit chat and have a good time and talk about our lives like i'm not doing that that's fucked up um and i haven't talked to him a lot the only time i reach out to him is when i need info about something and then i don't talk to him again. I don't tell him have a good night. I don't tell him any of that shit. Cause I don't think pedophiles deserve that sort of shit. You know, I, 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 I actually have a really conservative uh, viewpoint of pedophiles. Like I yeah. do believe that they should get the maximum sentence, if not the fucking death penalty for shit like that. Now, again, it's a cartoon, it's internet shit. It's very different, but I'm saying real life pedophiles deserve the fucking worse. Yeah. Um, so what I'm getting at at the end of the day is that send, he'll, he'll message me. I don't respond. You know, if he, tries to call me i don't pick up i only contact him if i need anything and when i found out about it it was more recently during the most recent crow live stream when he called out sen but at the moment i found out i knew my moral stance i knew my answer yeah crow knew about this for three years and he did not you know stop interacting and call him out until three years later he joked with him he got got along with him so my point that i'm getting at is it bothers the shit out of me that crow and his moral stance has changed so much over the last three years and he won't admit to this he won't admit yeah i was wrong for doing this he just says oh no we got along with him but that's there's nothing wrong with that even during the the pit live stream he sits here and says yeah there's nothing wrong with that we've gotten along and invite him to stream so what I was like, because he's a pedophile. And you just said he's a pedophile. <laughs> you're hanging around with a pedophile. There's nothing wrong with that. And he's at your, yeah, it, 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 it's re it really irks me. But at the end of the day, I can only control me. And I'm, I'm happy that I'm staying consistent. Yes, I got along with Sen, but I didn't know that shit. I didn't know where the evidence was. I didn't know if it was real. I didn't know if that was his account or not. Because Sen was going around with a lie saying that that wasn't him. That was somebody else. Yeah. So I, I didn't know what to believe. I didn't know the evidence. When Crow pulled up the evidence, I was like, okay, it's pretty clear. He did this. Even Sen admitted to it. And boom, everything's good. And so my stance stays consistent, moral, and I still get to make criticizing videos about those who aren't so uh, consistent. So, <laughs> Yeah, and I've, I'm one that, like, just to voice my opinion, I'm very nuanced in my take with Mr. Sen, um, and this kind of leads me into another question. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, like, uh, the, I, I, how the fuck do I word this? Larger, smaller t commentary figures like uh nick diorio or augie or yeah. any of them okay have you heard of lyrics i don't or think lyrics? so no. okay all right so oh lyrics yes yeah, lyrics yeah, lyrics yeah. Yes. um so he's one of those people that like i've i've always had a nuanced opinion on because i feel like he's shown more prevalence towards uh liking these kinds of things than say a mr sen have you noticed that like and again you kind of brought up similar things with the crows have you noticed like a lot of uh hypocrisy or moral inconsistency with like a lot of commentary when it comes to this stuff 
Yeah, um, I think it's who you know and what you know, really. Uh, um, if you know very popular people um, and you're a very small commentary channel, there's a good there's a very good chance that to stay in the good graces to those who are popular, you will shift your moral stance. Um, I've seen it happen. Have I personally ever done it? No. Um, but at the end of the day, it all depends on what morals we're talking about. If we're talking about like your take on being a pedophile, I've seen people change their opinion a lot on it and it's kind of disgusting. But if we're talking about something as simple as like telling a little white lie, I've told lies. Like yeah. I've already lied to you during this interview who I've talked to. Cause I, I just can't tell you, you know? No, um, no, that's, that's understandable. So, so, but, but, but again, it, it all depends on what you view as morals, you know, like I'm here to tell, be honest and tell the truth as much as I possibly can. But if there's stuff that I have to stay quiet on, I will lie. And I do think that that is a little immoral to lie. But at the end of the day, there's a, there's a bigger, greater cause on why people do what they do. And so at the end of the day, I think on, on your stance on pedophile should always be consistent. There's no reason to lie or change your opinion on that it, unless, you know, your opinion is wrong. Um, but I think there is a right and wrong to it. Pedophiles are bad. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, they yeah. should be called out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you, you're, you're just asking about like the commentary sphere. And when I'm, when yeah. I'm saying is that there are people who are inconsistent with this, like a lot, like some people will say talking to minors online isn't a pedophile because they're not actually doing the act of doing anything with a, with, with a child. Well, the definition of pedophile is just being attracted to children, you know? Yeah. So I think there's a big, big difference in, in that. Uh, Sneeko, for example, he thinks that the age of consent should be lowered, meaning that there is a chance he could be attracted to a minor, which would then make him a pedophile. Yeah. And so, again, has he shown that he was attracted to a minor? I don't think so. I don't think there's a clip out there of him telling a 16-year-old that, you know, he thinks she's hot. But if he does, that would be a pedophile act, even if he thinks the word pedophile isn't true or if he thinks that the age of consent should be lowered it doesn't matter like like you know we, we live in america you yeah. know i know in different countries the age of consent is different and some things are allowed blah blah, blah whatever i still think it's in it's immoral it's wrong everyone got taught when you become an adult you date other adults yeah if you're 16 you're a teenager a teenager doesn't date an adult it's pretty clear cut things that people have learned and if you haven't learned it you've heard of it and it should be something that people look into before diving into and that's the case for anything that's really unknown so i guess for commentary channels if they're being inconsistent or their morals are shifting or not being that consistent at all um my biggest advice for any commentary channel, really, even if they're bigger than me, just if you don't know for sure what you're talking about, just look into it a little bit. Look at what other people say. It yeah. will really, really help. Um, there's some things that I didn't really know what I was talking about, and I had to, like, retract and change. And, you know, you do make those mistakes. I do think on certain things like being a like someone being a pedophile or or the topic of a pedophile yep. that should always be consistent. There is a right or wrong. You can be flamed for that because it's very easy to just be right on that it's very easy to be right and say hey it's just wrong to do that but it's very hard to be wrong on that unless you're being influenced by a bigger creator like for example toy bounty hunter he probably is very fond of delirious he's gotten along with delirious he, he talks to delirious yeah i do think that toy bounty hunter has shifted his coverage a little bit based on his relationship with delirious now again i'm not trying to call, call out toy for this i'm just saying i think you're being a little bit more favorable to delirious somebody who's being called out as being a pedophile yep. and it might be because you're a little starstruck by it you know and trust me i was starstruck when i first got to talk to the man's crew i was a little starstruck even Omar, i was a little starstruck but i still try to keep my morals consistent i try to still be civil and cordial and professional about it and treat this like a job like it's just this is business this is my personal life yes i can enjoy their content my personal life but during business it's just business and that's it and i do think that it's 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 a lot easier than people think to be on track. So when people fuck up, it's kind of like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, when commentary channels are being consistent, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, it's very easy just to get this right the first time. And yeah. I, it, it kind of goes back to Crow's original stream three years ago. How the fuck did you fuck that up? He's sending and receiving lolly, drawing images of children, and you all are just joking and, and invite them on for the next few years. I don't know how you fuck up that bad. I really don't. It's really like, I'm really dumbfounded on how that happened. Okay. And then uh, I've only got a couple more questions left. So um, okay. touching on the pit, um, is there anything else regarding that whole situation that you can think of um, where you talked with Crow that like, um, I know you talked about the whole lying about Louie thing already um, that like you kind of would like to point out or, or make mention of? Um, 
just his inconsistency, uh, Crow. Uh, he when I first asked him, "Do you consider Mr. Sen a pedophile?" He said, "No, I would not consider Mr. Sen a pedophile." He goes, "A lolly con, yes, but not a pedophile." And then later on, he changes out of an act of rage. He like yells at him and calls him a pedophile and says, "Fuck it, yeah, you are a pedophile." Out of an act of rage. I do want to point that out because I think that's going to be a topic of my video is that when Crow is mad or angry or gets emotional over something, it's very easy for him to change his stance or his opinion. Okay. I do think that that's something important to point out. I can see Crow watching this video if he I don't think he'll get super emotional over it. He's not usually a super emotional guy. But if he were to get emotional, either sad, mad, angry, worried, whatever it may be, um, it can it can really cause Crow to say or do really dumb things. And I don't think it was dumb for him to call Sen a pedophile because that's my stance. But I do think that that's inconsistent with what Sen or with, with what Crow actually thinks. Crow actually thinks that Mr. Sen's not a pedophile. He thinks that he's just a lollycon. And Crow's completely fine with hanging out with lollycons. That's just his stance. And it's an awful stance. But I do think at times when he's worried, scared, angry, mad, he kind of flips over to the uh, stance that I'm more on. And it really bothers me because I, I wish if I would have gotten along with Crow, me and him actually probably agree on a lot, a lot of things. It's just the fact that he's just he's arrogant. He's strong headed, a lot like me. We just don't get along. You know, we're two opposite ends of, the, uh, of a magnet. We repel. We yeah. don't go together. <laughs> you know, that's just sort of how me and Crow are. And I, I, I'm like that with a lot of people online. I just don't get along with a lot of people. And that's fine. You know, we don't have to get along, but just be respectful. And that's, I think, another thing, too, to point out. I just don't think he's that respectful either. I, it shows in that live stream. I think he's very disrespectful at times. He can be cordial and civil, but I do think when it comes to topics that he's wrong about, he can be very disrespectful, um, especially his re his recall of past events that happened between us was very disrespectful. Um, I do think his um, opinion of me and the way he treated me back then was very disrespectful. And it's not something I'm ever going to forget, um, but it is something I'm, I'd be willing to forgive if he made an effort to come out and say, Hey, I was wrong for that. Would he ever do that? No. Again, I think he's too arrogant to admit <laughs> when he's wrong, but you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was one thing that kind of stuck out to me with the whole Kasonic thing that it, just getting to your point there that I, I just didn't seem to sit right with me. So there's a point um, to highlight where you're sitting there and you're going back and forth with Crow and you you had to go, you had to go pick up a friend or something, I believe if I recall, right? Yeah. And um, you eventually end up leaving and that's when all of a sudden, oh, Crow remembers it was this right. situation and everything else. Do you think he um, purposefully did that disingenuously? See, that's the thing. I've had so many conversations with people about that afterwards because I had a lot of people watching that stream or, or at least watch the highlights of that stream and watch that part. Um, no, I don't think he did it. I think he honestly was told something from somebody else. That's okay. what I think. OK, um, I think he was he was I think he was told a lie. He stuck with that lie. And then when or you know, it could be because of a bad memory. I don't know how old he is. Isn't he close to 40 or something like that? I have no idea. I think but so, yeah. um, if it, it, I don't think he has bad memory like that. And the fact that he stuck to his gun so fucking hard when I was there. And then the moment I left, he was like, oh, shit, it was this. And he kind of had like a little bit of an overreaction to it. Um, I do think that maybe he was lied to. And he got told by John or Louie or somebody that I got cease and desist from Louie when that's not true. I've never received a cease and desist. I've gotten a threat from him, but not never cease and desist. Um, and he he claims that I've had two cease and desist from him or something. Like yeah, that. And yeah. I've never gotten even one. Um, and so I think he was told a lie. He stuck to his guns, never fact checked it. And that's kind of the problem. If he was able if he was if he was willing to reach out to me, he could have co corrected that. Um, but the fact that he didn't, he kind of always had that in the back of his head. And now he said it during the stream and he was wrong. And so it's either one, he lied, which I do think is, he, or he was lied to. Um, I think that was, is the most likely, but yeah, he could have been a little disingenuous. He, he could have been like, oh, I heard this, but then it kind of, you know, I, I, I'm just going to purposely say this to get, see if this will slip by. I think. It could be more likely, too, that maybe he just is misremembering things as well. But the things that he's misremembering 
you know, is so off. Time. I don't know what he meant to say. What was the meaning? Like he goes, oh, it wasn't cease and desist. It was this. Yeah. And I forgot what I forgot what he said, but I don't know how you confuse the two because the, the two were completely different things. Yep. So I don't know how you confuse a cease and desist with that. So, again, I do think he was lied to. I think he was lied to. And then maybe he was panic messaging people or he was just like panicking to try to think of a way to get out of it. And then the moment I left, he corrected it. But I did come back later that stream and I was like, yep. so, you know, why'd you why why why'd you lie about that you know because i heard that you were that, that that you misremembered or something and he said he goes oh no i just misremembered and i was like are you sure about that how, how the hell do you do that how the hell do you do that um but yeah again it's it, i'd love to have a private conversation with him and just get him to admit okay who told you that you know who, who's lying because then i can just go to them and talk to them about it you know and then you're off the off the case and i tried doing that during the live stream too i was like hey dude this isn't on you if somebody lied to you just tell me who did it and i'll go talk to them and then crow was like i ain't hesitant like he was gonna yes. say something yes. and then he was just like uh, i think i should not say anything you know just in case i'm getting information wrong and i was like yeah it's kind of where you fucked up man you could you know <laughs> yeah i definitely noticed that it was very 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 different especially the second time that you came back the tonality there was a big shift in it and everything else too yeah he was a lot more <laughs> respectful when i came back i noticed like he was really like arrogant with me we were arguing about a lot of things but the moment i really was uh, not even when i came back it was just when he got that wrong and i told him he got it wrong he was just like a lot more calm a lot more civil and then when i came back he was also very nice to me and yes. i like that you know <laughs> um so uh is there anything else that i've not really asked about that comes to mind for you that like you would like to make known or you would like to like talk about um not in particular if it's referring to like the crow or sen or anything to do with that sort of thing not really um i think we we've covered a lot of it um I think the biggest thing going forward is that like Sen's still doing his own content on his channel, I believe. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I don't know if Crow's doing as much content anymore. I, I don't know if he's kind of taking a break or still uploading or not. I have no idea. Um, but like I said before, I, I plan on making another video on Crow. Um, Crow's brother and I have talked and Crow's brother uh, doesn't really does not like Crow that much. Um, so he was willing to talk to me about a lot of things. And there's a lot of things about Crow's past that has not really been uncovered. Um, maybe it has been covered a little bit, but it, it's definitely stuff that I would like to re-highlight and go over. Um, because I think it gives a little bit of an explanation on why Crow is so sporadic when it comes to commentary. Why he's kind of all over the place at times. Um, again, not trying to be disrespectful to him. If it's an error and he's going to fix his ways and be better, that's great. I've went through that phase before. It's great to change and get better at what you do. But I do feel like a lot of Crow's Pass that's already publicly online and accessible is um, a lot of it that a lot of people could look at it and be like, oh, OK, he's kind of all over the place. He's been all over the place for a long time. Yeah. And um, I, I do. I, I, I can't wait to show that and reveal more about that. But again, it's just a longer process. I, I take a lot more time publishing videos now than i used to no so. no you're fine you're fine um just just as an aside and a curiosity of mine you could just say yes or no did you have you found the reason why crow and his brother do not get along because i noticed that in reviewing yeah. information <laughs> yeah okay. yeah i have um you know it's pretty easy to find out why they don't get along when you have one side of the story, I guess, because like you're just going to take that at face value. I do feel like there's more information on Crow's side that I could hear from. But again, as soon as Crow's brother told me his side of the story on why they don't get along and all the shit that Crow's brother was telling me about, um, I I tried to reach out to Crow. I, I, I sent him a message. I said, hey, can we talk? And he hasn't responded to me. So, and I know he uses Discord. I know he fucking opens Discord. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I'm not <laughs> stupid. Um, but I reached out to him and I said, hey, he didn't respond. So at the end of the day, if I publish the video, don't get mad at me for publishing it yeah. and <laughs> having only one side of the story. Cause I, I tried reaching out to you, man. And that's one thing that I wish Crow did with me is that every interaction that we've had, it's his opinion about me or my video or what I did that I have disagreement with. And it could easily be resolved if he just reached out to me first and he never did i'm trying to reach out to him before doing this i really am and again my motivation isn't to like oh i'm gonna go get crow back or anything like that it's just that there's a lot of unresolved shit i just learned that sends a fucking pedophile and that you've been hanging out with them for three years and i made one video talking about that 
yeah, there's going to be a lot more to unpack the more I look into that. And that's sort of where the motivation of this video is coming from is that, you know, it's like figuring out mini lad is a, is a pedophile and he has all these allegations. There's a lot to unpack going forward. And there was a lot to unpack. Same thing with crow. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot more there than I thought, you know, there's, there's a lot more there than I thought. I thought it was just friends hanging out. The main commentary, there was a couple problems here and there. It's kind of like a deeper, larger thing to unpack there. And I found immediately like, oh, I can make a video out of this. I can, you know, everything I'm finding out now, I can share with others so they know. And everyone can just be well informed about what is publicly out there. Again, I'm not doxing. I'm not revealing any private info that shouldn't be to me. I'm just revealing what's publicly online that anyone can search for. And I'm putting it all in one video. So it's pretty easy to find a night like this video as a, oh, this is what Crow's been like for the last few years. This is kind of what he's been doing. So, yeah, no, I, I would have appreciated even just a similar type of situation with Mr. Sam, because when I was reviewing everything for him, as you know, there's the name changes and everything else. So it's always me. Yeah. So like finding information throughout the history can be muddied very easily so no i i look forward oh, to yeah. that <laughs> yeah um and then i guess the only other thing that i can really think of is that um have you found any information out about uh the comic because this is something that came up with my interview with gg and i just didn't know if maybe you did or not again you could just answer yes no or leave it as vague as you want because i know you do have a video coming out mm-hmm uh, the comic. What do you, what are you referring to? Apparently, so when I interviewed Gigi, um, Crow had a Patreon for a comic that he was going to make, and he had not stopped that uh, as of the time that I had the interview, and he had not produced this comic. So it's kind of a veto situation. Oh, so he requested money out of the people who followed him to make something and he didn't make it yet. Yes. Yeah. And I just didn't know if you had known about that or if it was something that you had looked into at all. It is something that, yes, was mentioned to me. Um, but no, I cannot talk about that. OK, no, that's understandable. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, is there anything else um, other otherwise uh, that you would like to mention? Maybe. Um, when we could roughly expect a video or um anything else um i don't know in particular um i guess the the, the video i wanted to get out in the beginning of september so <laughs> i've been working on this since late like like mid to late july i've been working on this for a long time so i wanted to get it out in the beginning of september i even told people that i would try to get it out in the beginning of september did not fucking happen um so we're beginning of October now. Honestly, I have not done too much. Like I just, I told you privately that my internet just went out for the last 10 days. So I, I really couldn't access a lot of my files and what I had online because I save, yeah. save a lot of my info, info through Google Docs and stuff like that. So okay. it was really hard for me to work on stuff um, while my internet was out, um, which kind of sucks because I do this for a job. So I, I kind of need to pick up the steam <laughs> and do a lot more work now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know in particular when a video comes out. Um, it's just it, it, there's with crow there's a lot of moving pieces you know because there's so many people that's interacted with him over the years his brother's just one of them i've talked to a lot more people than that too and i'm kind of waiting for more info as well okay. um it's kind of hard to structure if you if you imagine like if you met what's the easiest way for me to put it i guess if you have like train track pieces you know you make yep. a little train track or whatever yep. and then you get like all this it, all of a sudden you get like a curved piece like <laughs> that can throw a wrench in everything so like i'm just waiting to get all the pieces to like okay how is the video going to start what's yep. the best way to introduce this once do i do it in chapters do i do it does this need to be multiple videos or is it just one yeah i'm hoping for it to just be one video because i'd rather not make multiple um that's just more pressure that you have to get the next video out you know to keep the audience engaged and look at another part i'd rather just get it all in one video um but again it just takes a little bit of time i do think that um there's definitely ways i could shorten it up and get it out sooner I just don't want to rush it as if it's some other commentary thing. This is a guy who's been involved or interacted with me for the last few years um, as I've been doing this for a job and I want to be able to get it right. I don't want to get it wrong. I would hate to defame an individual as well. 
a lot of it is hyperbole or hyperbole and uh, opinionated and stuff like that. But there are some real evidence and shit shown in the video that shows what is being said and talks about. So again, I'm just trying to do this the best way possible. And if Crow responds to it, he does. If he doesn't, he doesn't. It doesn't really matter. The, the purpose of it is just to inform people. So we're all on the same page about Crow. You know, we're all on the same page about the same guy we're trying to have a discussion about. So yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I think that's honestly everything. Um, I appreciate you coming by and taking time to talk with me. I mean, God, we talked for like mm-hmm. an hour or more. <laughs> so I do yeah. really, really, really appreciate it. Um, are you just doing still your, are you going to be getting back in the groove of doing live streams or do you do regular live streams on your channel or how can people find you? Um, uh, yeah. So just search up TJV. It's a little guy with a beard and a purple hat. Uh, that's my icon. Uh, you can just find my YouTube channel. Um, I don't do live streams nearly as much anymore. Um, it's just a lot harder to do live streams when I have a ton of people over at my home and hanging out all the time. It's really hard to find six hours of your time for like four to six <laughs> hours to prep, do a live stream and then whatever you have to do after the live stream. So, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to find the time to do that. Um, I'm mainly just uploading commentary videos and uh, I hang out over on my discord. I try to join VCs while I edit. So I I'm interacting with anyone in my community who wants to. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just it. I would like to do more live streams, but it's just pretty hectic. You got to have a lot of time to plan for it. And if you do it out of, out of the blue, you don't get as many viewers. It's not as fun of the live stream. So I'm going to try to get back into the group of things, but it's going to be maybe down the line if I do that. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And as somebody that's live streams for like eight hours, one day a week, I understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. I mean, just the prep beforehand, too. You got to get prepared that you're going to be sitting in a chair for eight hours and yeah. make sure you have your water and yep. all this other stuff. And I don't I don't take breaks on my live stream. So, like, I know some people, they'll, like, press a button and it'll be like, we'll be right back or something like that. I don't do that during live streams. Yeah. Like I just sit there and, like, if I have to pee like an hour or two and I got two hours left, I'm, I'm holding it in, you know, yeah. I'm just <laughs> going through. So, yep. Yeah. No, I've been there uh, at, at points now because mine go for so long. I'm like, yeah, no, we're just going to break. We're going to break. Cause I need right. to like, I need relief here. I'm not going to be able to hold this yeah. for another five hours. <laughs> right. Uh, qu- quick, quick, Quick question for you. Um, I, I don't know too much about your channel. Um, I know I reached out to you about the, your interview with Gigi Evan, which, which kind of sparked all this. But um, what do you do? Do you do commentary or do you do you do other types of content? Yeah, I do commentary. I do my live stream. So typically every I think it's now Saturday nights, so almost overnight. Um, I do my live stream where I go through, you know, a few topics on popular commentary down to lesser known low cows and stuff like that. And uh, I've got Gigi Evans comes by and another friend of mine, Jim, and we'll talk about subjects. They're both really well versed in internet history and lore. And I know a little bit, so it gets to some interesting topics and conversation. And yeah, I typically cut them up and I try and put my VODs out um, somewhat regularly, normally middle of the week so that there's something to watch if you want to watch just a segment. But yeah, I cover a mm-hmm. pretty large breadth of topics from some gaming stuff to lol cows to popular commentary. Oh, interesting, interesting. So, but yeah, it's uh it's been fun. I've only been doing this um technically my channel just had a 1 year birthday. But like oh, I didn't start even nice. I didn't even start doing this until the end of October. I think my first stream was like right around Halloween. So like right. I haven't even hit a year yet. <laughs> <laughs> right that's interesting yeah i i'm my channels uh I, I created it in 2015 but i had a channel before that that i created in november of 2014 so i'm coming up on 10 years i'm 24 now so i'm just i'm glad that i started when i was 14 because i'd hate to be in my 30s still doing this so um <laughs> but uh yeah it, it, that's interesting you know uh you kind of do all different types of stuff you know keep, keeps it kind of open i think that's the fun part of, yeah. of keeping it kind of open being able to change it if you're if, if you're kind of locked into one you are more than likely to get popular off that off that one thing but like it's just if you have all different types it's kind of harder to grow and get big off of doing multiple different types you know because an audience really just likes a specific a set type yeah. of content yeah. you know yeah and that's one thing i do like i've got like a small but very very loyal audience i mean they're out they interact well and everything so it's i do appreciate that and yeah, I love the fact that like our big thing is just like funny shit. Like we we'd prefer to find something yeah. to laugh at. 
honestly like right. because there's so much of the the pedophilia of this or essay or rape or something it's like i yeah. don't have the heart to sit here and like who gives a shit what i have to say about this that hasn't been said 15 times before by better people that are more experienced <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but hey I, I i was the same way at the start like i when i first made a mini lad video this like first time get popular off of a it wasn't even a commentary stream it was just me reacting to the allegations live it wasn't i wasn't trying to do commentary but um i just was talking about it and a lot of people cling to it and i was just like oh i guess i'm doing commentary now and yeah i always got warned that the commentary community is awful to get into don't get into the commentary community and i, I i'm now like so deep you know into the com <laughs> I, I say i'm so deep but again like over the I, I i've talked about a lot of issues like edp and dr disrespect and now the mr beast shit like i've talked about different shit than the vanos crew but yeah i i i don't know it's just back then i was kind of afraid that i i would change who i am based on that and i think it only made me honestly a, kind of a better person over time yeah. um because y you're, you're kind of reinduce or re reintroduced to your morals and what you've learned over your lifetime. And now you're spreading that online. Um, and I try to do that as much as I possibly can. But again, at the end of the day, you're a news channel. You got to yeah. keep up on the news. If you don't, yeah. you're going to fall behind. And that's just kind of things that suck is that I have a life outside of this as my job. Um, I have so many different things going on. Not, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm just like trying to point out that like, since I have so much shit going on, it's hard to keep up with shit and like constantly be home on my computer, recording, editing, writing a script for the next video and, yep. and putting that all out in a timely manner. So you're the first person to cover some news. That's why the Van Os crew stuff was so much fun because I was told information privately by certain parties uh, and I was the first person to put it out and I could I could go at my own pace because I was told the information in private and I'm going to reveal it. And, you know, yep. that's sort of the fun stuff like Ohm and Wildcat. Oh, yeah. And yeah. A few people have done that. So, yeah, uh, I, I've gotten some little bits and like jumps in videos and stuff like that. So I can understand and definitely relate to that. I mean, I, there was a guy that I went yeah. after that was uh, um, in the local communities, like, you know, the more local wranglers, Smoky McSee, Kiwi Tapes. There's a couple of different people that kind of do that stuff. And uh, this guy was a part of that and was a a big involved piece and it turns out that he had a very risque discord and everything else and i've gotten feedback even since that hey no because of your video like we we've not allowed this guy to be involved in our community like in person and i was like wow okay that's a different that hits different you know what i mean mm. <laughs> so it's it's uh yeah so i've been kind of reviewing that as far as like where my morals stand and all that because i know that is such a big thing of this and like i i'm confident oh, yeah. in my morals and my my ethics just as much as i'm sure you are so yeah yeah but it is a very yeah. very big piece of this and a lot of people don't understand that and you do get that you do end up self-reflecting on a lot of things Right. Yeah. And, and it's always I don't think discord's any more of a help because I remember when I started my discord server, I thought everything was going to be rosy and peachy. Like, oh, yeah, all these online people like some of them are my staff members. I'm going to be friends with them for a long time. Almost everybody who was on my staff team at the start of my discord server, they've all been against me. I've gotten the FBI called on me by one of them. Uh, I, I've been investigated. Yeah, there's like a like if we ever if you ever want another interview with me where we just talk about my discord. Oh, my God, dude, that's going to be a hell of a thing because again it's just uh, there, there was while i was talking about like the commentary and drama online there was a bunch of drama happening in my discord server between the staff me and the staff and even some of my friends online like my um it's kind of a out there thing i don't mean to take up too much of your time here yeah, but fine. um uh my best friend uh that i used to be or my 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 po ex best friend. I don't know how, how I would label that, but yeah. Um, as soon as I started getting big on YouTube, he got really fond of like, oh my god, dude, you you're you're so big on you because he his dreams to like be a YouTuber or whatever. And I was best friends with this kid since like he was like like four like we were both like four or five years old when we first oh, started wow. hanging okay. out. Yeah. So I, I yeah I've been I've been best friends for him for like ever, and I'm fucking like 20 21 years old, and I'm starting to get really big on YouTube. And when I went to go buy my my corvette after getting that big youtube check i he went with me and you know he was so 
proud of me and so in support of me and was willing to help out in any way possible. Turns out he was a bit of a PDF file and I never knew that. And so when you learn that about people who are even close to you, it, it stings, it hurts, but I had every right to be like crow where I'm still hanging out with a PDF file, or I could be like some of these popular YouTubers who are still getting along with people who have done bad shit, but I cut them off completely. I said, okay, yeah, we can't be friends. And I found out right when he, moved out of the place we got together he moved out he left um and then you know i i, I had to take him to small claims court because he refused to pay me back for any of the rent he we had a Ooh. written agreement together um so i had to take him to small claims court he ran away they could never find him so i never got to go to court with him um but he, he was my childhood best friend and i had to go through all that shit and the one thing that just kept it is i when i found out he was a pedophile talking to minors I was just like, holy shit, dude, like you don't ever expect it to be like your best friend or somebody, but you got to make the tough decision. Like, do you want to hang around people like that? And I always think that the people you hang out with, you become more and more like them, too. So I I don't want to hang around people who are doing bad things and horrible things. You know, if they're speeding in a car, that's one thing, you know, like I I don't care. You know, you're speeding, you're breaking the law a little bit, but doing something like talking to minors, being attracted to children. Yeah. That's that's disgusting. So again, yeah, but that's a whole different story for another day if we want to. But I ca- yeah, I completely we'll, we'll understand. Like your morals do get challenged. Like you said, your morals do get challenged, and they do. Like my morals were challenged that day. Like what am I gonna do? Like am I am I gonna say something about it? Am I not? And I think I made a stream that day, and I was talking about other topics, and I briefly mentioned for like five minutes what happened to Blake, my ex best friend, and I mentioned it real quick and. I, I, I told my entire Discord staff, hey, unadd him. He's bad news. Yep. If you still want to talk to a pedophile, that's up to you. But like, yeah. I, I'm telling you to unadd him. He's awful. And uh, yeah, so it, it, it's it's stuff that you got to kind of learn. And it's, it's definitely going to be something later on in my life when I go back and reflect at this stage in my life where I'm online a lot and I had this as a job. I'm going to look back and be like, damn, that, that was a crazy time. You know, a lot of surprises, <laughs> a lot of twists and turns, you know. Yep. Oh, man. Well, I do appreciate it, and thank you so much for taking your time and stopping by and talking with me.